All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the video on the prereq material for section 4.1. Uh, going over some skills that we'll need in order to work on the problems in section 4.1. All right, so first things we're going to look at is just some conversions between percentages and decimals. So we'll start with here where we're given some percentages and asked to convert them into decimal form. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can take your percentage here, you can divide it by 100. Okay, and in this case, if we did 15% divided by 100, that would give us 0.15 as our percentage. So that's one way to do it. Or what you can do is locate the decimal place, which in this case, because this is like a 15, I'm gonna do this off to the side, it's like 15, and the decimal place is there at the end. You can take the decimal there, move it two spots to the left, and you end up with 0.15. Okay, so a couple of different ways to go from uh, percents into decimals. Now, <clears throat> be careful. Sometimes in our decimal, or our percent, excuse me, we can have a decimal. So for example, right here, 42.3% has a decimal in it, but we know it's a percentage because there's that percent sign there. And so if we want to convert this to a decimal, we'll again take the decimal place, move it two spots to the left. And when we do that, then we end up with our decimal answer as 0.423. So that's 42.3% as a decimal. Further, like on the third one here, we could take something that's only a decimal. So 0.7%, and even though I know that's a decimal, Right? It's still a percentage because we see that percent sign. So if we're going to convert that into a decimal, we again take our decimal point, move it two spots to the left. Since there were no numbers and those spots were removed, it will add zeros. And so we end up with 0.7% as a decimal is 0 0.007. Okay? All right, now to go from a decimal to a percentage now. Well, here we kind of want to do the opposite. So we saw, first of all, one way to go from a percentage to a decimal was to divide by 100 and go from a decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100. Or, like we did with moving decimal places, here we have the 0.67 as a decimal. So to turn it into a percent, we'll take and move the decimal point the other way now. So we'll go one, two spots to the right. So this becomes 67%, that first one. All right, if we look at, say, part D, 0.005, or 0005, to convert to a decimal again, we take the decimal point, move it two spots to the right, when we do that, we end up with 0 0.05, and then again, it's percentage. So 0.05% would be our percent there. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna skip over problems three, four, and five, just uh, finding percentages of things. You can do those yourselves. And then let's talk about simplifying using exponents. Okay? And for these ones, Start with the first one. So we have a cubed times b to the seventh all over a squared times b to the fifth. And when we're doing this, you know, we can think of the top here as a times a times a times b times b times b times b times b. That's how many b's? That's five b's, six b's, seven b's, all divided by a times a times b times b times b times b times b. And then what we can do is go through and cancel anything that's common between the top and the bottom. So two A's on the top, two A's on the bottom. We cancel out five B's from the bottom and five B's from the top. And we do that, it looks like we end up with A times B squared. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Uh, although that, as you can see, can get to be a little tedious. So another way to approach a problem like this is to, when we're, because we're dividing things being raised to powers here, we can subtract the exponents. And when I say subtract the exponents, we only do that with exponents on uh, 
the same variable. So for example, we have an a cubed on the top, a squared on the bottom. We can do the top variable, the top exponent minus the bottom one. So we do three minus two, that would give us a to the first. We do the same thing with the b. So we have b to the seventh on the top, b to the fifth on the bottom. We can subtract the seven and the five. And we do that ends up with b squared. So we end up a to the first times b squared or a times b squared. Okay, which is the same thing we had before. All right, let's look at something else that might happen. So let's look at the second one. So we have a to the sixth times b to the fifth over a cubed times b to the seventh. We're again gonna subtract the exponents, um, variables that are the same. So for the a's, we'll do six minus three, which gives us three. For the b's, now be careful when you do this, you have to do the top exponent minus the bottom one. So we do five minus seven, that'll give us b to the minus two. So here we have a negative exponent. Well, what the hey are we supposed to do with that? Well, uh, negative exponents, what they tell us to do is we can take this b to the negative two and we can write it as one over b squared. So notice what has happened is that that b has now gone into a denominator and the exponent went from negative to positives. So now we have a cubed times one over b squared. Make the a cubed like a cubed over one. So that works the same way with number or variables as it works for numbers. And if we multiply these fractions straight across, we'll end up with b a cubed over b squared as our answer there. All right, let's continue on. Let's do the next one. So we have a to the negative six times b squared all over a cubed times b to the negative eight. We're again gonna subtract our exponents. So we have a to the minus six minus three. So negative six minus three gives us negative nine. For the b's, again, we gotta be careful how we do this. It's gonna be two minus negative eight so I'm write that out so we see it's two minus negative eight. So the top minus the bottom, even though the minus, the bottom's already negative. Minus minus here makes plus. So two plus eight gives us to the 10th. So we have a to the negative ninth, b to the 10th. And then because we see we have a negative exponent on the a, we can make that one over a to the ninth times b to the 10th or b to the 10th over one. Again, multiply straight across. This will give us b to the 10th over a to the 9th. Okay, so that's the answer there. It might be kind of hard to see. b to the 10th over a to the 9th. All right, now it starts to get really fun on d and e. So we have b to the 10th times 2 over b to the 4th. Well, here, we're again going to make this b to the 10th, b to the 10th over 1. And we could multiply across, but before we do that, something we can do is some cross canceling. So notice we have a b to the fourth in the bottom up here, or down here, b to the 10th in the numerator up here. So we can cancel out some b's. So we can cancel out the b to the fourth here. That'll cancel four of these 10, so that's six. So when we multiply here, we have b to the sixth times two, which give us two b to the sixth. Over, we have a one times, when we cancel out the b to the fourth, that just becomes a one, so we have a one there. So two b to the sixth over one just becomes two b to the sixth. Okay, that would be our answer there. All right, one more on those. So we have now b to the 10th times two over b to the negative four. Now notice we have a negative exponent here on the, on the b. So before we multiply anything, let's deal with that. So we can make this b to the 10th times, the b to the negative four can get moved to the numerator here. So this would become two times b to the fourth. So here we see kind of the opposite of what we had before. So we had a negative exponent in the denominator this time, so it moved that term up to the numerator, excuse me. And then we can multiply here, this can be two times, and then remember if we do b to the 10th, 
times b to the fourth, since we have the same base here and they're being multiplied, we can add their exponents. So this will become two times b to the 14th. Okay, and that's that. All right, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you for watching.